everyone, welcome back to this series about world religions. We are exploring religions from a historical lens and celebrating the uniqueness we find in each. Again, not all religions are the same, but there are similarities you can draw on each of them. There are also huge differences that we negate if we don't understand their background. Think of it this way, M&Ms and Skittles. Yes, they are similar and they're both candy and brownish, but to say they're the same, misses out on the uniqueness each candy has to offer. We want to explore differences and celebrate the goodness of the chocolate. Hashtag Team m and So let's look at Hinduism today. Hinduism is one of the world's oldest religions, and it started in South Asia, which is in the area of modern day India and Pakistan. Many historians say the belief system emerged in the Indus River Valley around 4,000 years ago. The tricky part about Hinduism is there's no specific founder and often is a combination of many traditions and philosophies, starting with the Aryan people who migrated to South Asia and brought in the Vedic beliefs. Think of Hinduism as very flexible. Unlike other religions, are more strict with their beliefs. This one is flexible. Here's a good example. When thinking about deities or who God is, there are various Hindu beliefs. Many historians would say it is polytheistic and they believe in many gods. Poly meaning many, theism talking about the study of God. So many gods. Although many Hindus would say they're henotheistic, which means they worship a single deity known as Brahman, while not denying that other gods exist. And then others would just say that they are having lots of different people like Shiva and Vishnu or Krishna, the god of compassion and love, are just manifestations of that ultimate god, Brahman. To learn more about these different deities, you can read any of the Hindu sacred writings, which again, isn't a single book. The primary book is the Vedas, which among them is the Rig Veda, which is one of the most popular of this. The Vedas transcend time, as they would say, and they don't really have a beginning or an end as they are referring to the ultimate truth. We do not know who wrote them. Hindus worship in temples, but they also worship at home where they often have a small shrine with pictures and a statue perhaps dedicated to a god or a goddess. Brahmins are a class within Hinduism who are often the priests or the teachers. Today, many Hindu leaders may be known as priests or gurus. And a follower of Hinduism is known as a Hindu. Over the years, I have heard many strange things meet up like a Hinduist, but no, it's Hindus. So let's break down the major beliefs of Hinduism. There's some good vocab words, so get your pen ready for these. Hindus believe in the doctrine of samsara, which is the continuous cycle of birth and death and reincarnation. They also believe in karma, which is the universal law of cause and effect. Good karma means that your good deeds will cause you good things, whereas bad karma says that a person's wrong acts will eventually catch up to them. Hindus focus on living out their dharma, which is their place or duty in life. It focuses on people living out their morality in all aspects, regardless if they don't like their job or their position in society. Now, the ultimate goal is release from the cycle of samsara. This escape from samsara is called moksha, it is where a person's soul becomes part of the absolute soul, being once again Brahman. The caste system is a social hierarchy in India that divides Hindus based on their karma and their dharma. The four main castes or classes are Brahmins, which are the priests or the teachers, the Kshatriyas, which are the protectors or government workers, the Vaishyas, who are the skillful producers, and again, the Shudras, who are the unskilled laborers. I will say there is contention about the caste system. Some Hindus say that the caste system isn't a part of the reincarnation process. Others say the caste system is just a way to create social order in society. People who fell in love with different castes were not allowed to marry each other. And I wonder if there's an Indian version of Romeo and Juliet. Additionally, to add in the classes of the untouchables, if you've heard of that, 
is not mentioned in the Rig Veda. So today, technically, the caste system is illegal, and now that they are an independent nation in India. Now, similar to Judaism, Hinduism isn't technically a universal religion where they seek converts. Hindu beliefs are diffused and are spread because Hindus themselves move. Initially, these beliefs spread throughout the Indian Ocean Basin and a little bit to Southeast Asia. Additionally, most Hindus are Indians, so that's where Hinduism was. In regard to gender roles, Hinduism is very patriarchal in societal terms. Historically, marriage was more arranged in Hindu families where fathers would give their daughters away with little to suit, no say to females. There's an old custom where female widows would commit suicide after their husband's death. This wasn't a widespread custom, but the idea that women were a nuisance and couldn't provide for their family tells us a little bit about their place in society. However, many deities within Hinduism are female, while Brahman, the ultimate being, is seen as genderless. We could totally dig into so much more about this, but I hope this gives you a good overview of Hinduism. Thanks for tuning in. If you find this information helpful, give us a like, subscribe below, and also check out the other videos in this series about world religions.